One week from today, the Rockies start the season. They have five uh, spots to fill in their rotation, and they only have three slots that are full. What are they going to do, Troy? Yeah, wait till next year has become a warning with the Rockies, mm-hmm. with the rotation. I, they, it hurts with De La Rosa out. What are they going to do? Eddie Butler's should make the team. I would expect Eddie Butler to make the team, Eric. Jonathan Gray, and I know Kisla, the guys around, oh, we need Gray up there. He lasted two-thirds of an inning right. on Saturday. And then he was walking around the clubhouse limping because he had a sore groin. Yeah, Gray, for me, he's just not ready. He, he needs a little more time. He doesn't have a third pitch. He's not ready. And I get that he's, you know, who cares if they rush him? He's not going to play here five years anyway. I agree with that assessment, but he's not ready right now. He's just not ready. Eddie Butler makes it. Christian Bergman makes it. And then you get De La Rosa back and, you know, and take your shot. They needed David Hale to be in the rotation. He blows out his oblique. De La Rosa gets hurt. And then Gray just implodes on Saturday in what was kind of a make-or-break start. So not the way you want to be going into the season with that many questions in your rotation. That was great. I love all the details and all the name dropping. That was fantastic. Uh, for my notes here, I've got uh, who cares and does it matter? <laughs> wow. <laughs> because it, seriously, doesn't matter. It doesn't sound like it does. Who, you know? It, well, it does for Gray because he has a future as a star player in the MLB should. Mm-hmm. So to rush him and stun his growth by letting him just get absolutely demolished in April – you can set a pitcher back here because mentally they, their psyche gets battered and they have trouble coming through that and they start to really doubt themselves. So with Gray, there's every reason to be a little more patient because he's showing he's not ready. But I agree with Chad. Yeah. Someone asked me on Twitter the other day, what do you think of the Rockies' chances in their rotation? I'm like, they're starting Kyle Kendrick on opening day. Right. Nothing else matters. If he's your opening day starter, you're not trying to win this season. I know Chad's going to go off on this, so I'm going to let you start with this. <laughs> okay. I, I'm going to I'm going to let Chad play anchorman. Um, Jonathan Gray has a groin injury now. Dickerson has a lower back injury. We know about Cargo in his knee. Gray has that groin. Breitage brought in a new strength and conditioning coach. Is this just bad luck year after year after year? Or is there something that the Rockies are not doing correctly with their off-season training program? Well, I think if you saw it statistically, Eric, it's no different than other teams. They're just so thin that when guys get injured, you're just like, oh, my God, another guy hurt. Where other teams have capable replacements, they have no depth for the most part. Their depth is 4A-type players, we call it, guys who are just filling in for a week or two, so you notice it much more. Remember the year in 2010, their last good season. Tulowitzki broke his wrist. He got hit by a pitch. He was right. out six weeks. Clint Barmas played at an all-star level. That's like the example of good teams have a guy that can play, not just, oh, my God, if it's hit to him. You know, so I don't, I'm, I'm reluctant to blame. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. It's, it's like when you play Little League. Little League. Seriously, have you, have you coached Little League yes. before? Uh-huh. You always put the worst kid in right field. Yeah. And a left-handed kid comes up. You're like, oh, no. Oh, no, please don't hit them. There's some YouTube clips, and I can't think of the guy's name, where he's like, if you're older than 13 and you're playing in right field, you uh, have to. <laughs> But the point is, I don't, I'm reluctant to blame a strength and conditioning guy because these guys train year-round. I mean, it could be their own guy they work with in the off-season, Chad, right? I mean, these professional athletes, it used to be spring training was come in and shed 20 pounds, use the first two weeks of, literally to lose weight because guys worked in the off-season. Now they all have their own trainers. They all work out year-round. For the most part, they watch their diet, not all of them, but they're year-round athletes. Can you blame the coach and a team strength guy, Chad, for what happens? You can a little bit you know, because he needs to create a, 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 a system that you know, keeps guys healthy. That should be the number one goal of each uh, strength and conditioning coach. But to your point, guys, now I have, you know, here's my, this is my throwing guru, and this is my batting guru, this is my yoga stretching guru, this is my speed guy. So it's difficult for a team to wrangle all that with all the different players and try to keep everybody healthy. But it's fascinating that some guys are just built for sports. Some guys can remain remarkably healthy, and that's what they do. So I, I think this is much more of a scouting thing than a strength and conditioning thing. Hmm, interesting. Go after guys who can show themselves to be healthy because, I've said it before on the show, availability is more important than ability. Your ability to 
to be there game in and game out, but regardless of sport, is more important than your talent level. Your, your, your toughness, your ability to be healthy is paramount more than anything else. When you hear about these injuries as a football player, you must just kind of snicker and go, oh, really? You have a strained groin? Well, part of me does, and part of me recognizes that the grind of baseball, you don't want to go into the season nicked up. I mean, I don't feel that way because I'm empathetic. You're empathetic. You feel for other people, right, Troy? Sometimes, yeah. I mean, well, not you, but other I mean, people. But I, Chad I, over here doesn't give a crap about anybody but himself. I've coached long enough to know once you leave a player and become a coach, you develop an incredible tolerance for other people's pain. And so I'm, I'm at that level right now. But, but the, 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 That's the, a Seinfeld the, episode with the chair. Yeah. Where George has the greatest sense. I can sense even the slightest bit of suffering yes. when you got that security guard yes. in the chair and he yeah. fell asleep. Right. It's, the, it's the opposite as a coach. Yeah, you can dismiss anyone else's pain. <laughs> right. It's exactly Nobody's the opposite as a coach. But there's a, there's a, there's a, a line to, and, and a, a, a certain toughness that other sports just don't roll with as far as you know in comparison to football or say right. hockey right. i will defend baseball on this because i'm more i'm the baseball guy mm -hmm. on this too. baseball it's it's a unique skill set it's the liam neeson of sports here if oh. your finger's broken you can't hit right. so he can play with a broken finger or a broken hand even put a club on it and you'd be like a wwe guy just right. club it. you know, put a club you can't grip a bat you can't swing Right. If you, he was growing, he's a pitcher, he can't push off. He goes from throwing 95 to 82. So it's a, it's a weird skill set in baseball where they get – Larry Walker didn't play one time when he had a hangnail, which was a – you know, a, you're like, oh, yeah. my God, Larry, another injury. But what ha they can't grip a bat or they can't throw, so that's the only thing they're required to do. They can't do it. And that's what it, but it does sound from afar like, are you serious? The, the, the margin for success, I think, in baseball is so slim. Okay. And to go to be a 330 hitter and to be a 220 hitter can just literally be soreness in your finger and how you feel the bat in your hands. Right. Where in football, it's such an overall body kind of thing. Okay. Calvin Johnson can break a finger, <laughs> but he can still catch passes because he's got 10 other fingers. It's not such a precision type of sport like baseball right. is. And, you know, the, the, the strike zone. If you're a pitcher and you get a, you know, your groin is off, the, the ref's not going to allow you to do that. A, a Emmanuel Sanders can catch a low pass. Good point. And it's still within his catch radius. radius. The strike zone is defined differently by every ump, I know that, but it's still pretty tight. And right. if you're not functionally tight as a pitcher or functionally operating at 100%, it's going to, get, it's going to be very difficult for you to hit that time in and time out.